welcome everybody. Um, this is the Chaos Community DEI meeting. So this is where we talk about uh, kind of all things diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have a variety of different things that are kind of going on in this space um, and a few that I'd like to talk about today. So I put the minutes in the chat and you could, oops, sorry, <laughs> add yourself and just tell us how you're doing today. I got caught in the rain. It's about halfway out away from my house and it decided to start raining really hard and I had <laughs> no way to get home except to go through the rain. Um, and then we do, Daniel, do you, do you mind introducing yourself? It's nice to have you here, if that's okay. Yeah, I'm thanks. The spot, um, but. Thanks, Matt. I'm, I'm Daniel. I'm with GitLab, um, just like John. And on the we're both under developer relations, and I'm specifically on a contributor success team. So we kind of try to make the open source contribution process better at GitLab, um, both trying to grow the community and trying to improve the process of actually contributing to GitLab. Gotcha. Okay, well, that makes sense. I think John had brought this up <laughs> uh, yesterday in the community call. Um, I think I'd like to kind of understand more about what you're trying to accomplish. I think we all would and how we can how we can help and connect here in the chaos project. Um, so well, it's nice to have you here. So I, I did wanna, um, at least I'll share my screen here. All right, so um, I did wanna give a few updates on DEI event badging. So we um, we continue, for those of you that, that don't know, we have a process that does badging for open source events and that process um, is here so um basically we work with event organizers to think about how they're centering dei within their own projects and i know katie and anita and sean myself amongst many many other people have been involved in this process um i just one of the things that i continue to kind of struggle with at least on this is how we can um kind of expand katie you've probably heard this a million times but like how we can how we can expand the number of events that apply to dei event badging we work really closely with the linux foundation and linux foundation events and we've badged over 100 events um, that are usually related to like OSSNA or OSSEU, you know, those and kind of the ancillary events. I've tried to, to connect with other foundations um, without, you know, kind of under the same premise, without much success in terms of kind of getting this started. I just, <laughs> so I'm still, I'm still really struggling with how to connect with open source projects or open source like host, you know, broker foundations to kind of encourage either the events that the foundations run or the events that the projects run to kind of go through this process. Not everyone is a Linux foundation event, but I would say that the majority are. Um, does anybody have any continued thoughts? I, I will, we will solve this problem. Um, we just can't seem to, to make that connection. Nothing. <laughs> I mean, I'm new here, so I, I'm not sure that this has been discussed before. Maybe it has, but like the LF is like a, you know, pretty large network. Yep. And they have, you know, various umbrella organizations like OpenSSF and CNCF. And then within those, you know, other organizations, there may be additional projects like within the CNC, obviously they have a lot of projects at different levels. Um, within Finos, I know they have like the legend project, but yeah, you know, maybe there's a discussion like at the LF around like what is the value of badging to these different, you know, sub communities or kind of nested communities like that. Um, and maybe they can help you know if we if you understand like where does this fit in the lf's priorities maybe you can shape the initiative in a way that like 
they can help push it out to those groups. Does yep. that make sense? It does make sense. Cause like in that scenario, like we, we do badge, uh, say like CNCF or uh, KubeCon, I should say, you know what I mean? And we have badged kind of the LF events, but I do like the idea because there are a lot of 900 projects within the LF itself <laughs> that um, could probably be connected with more directly. So I do like that. It's a good idea. So one of the, I think one of the things I've brought up in the past is kind of, uh, kind of go, go to where these other communities are at and kind of meet them where they're at rather than, than trying to get them to come here. Uh, so an, an example of that would be maybe to do a panel or a presentation on badging at non Linux foundation conferences. Right. Uh, I think we, we probably have to be careful if we do that so that we're not coming in kind of being preachy. <laughs> uh, I like that. But that might be a, like a, at a, a badging, uh, a badging presentation or panel at Fosdom or at Fossey or, you know, some, some of those places might be, might be a way to uh, kind of expand it a little bit. Yep. Um, ASF things. Okay. Good. I do. I do think we need to be careful not to come in and say that, uh, like, well, this is how the Linux Foundation is doing. No, it. I, I agree. So it needs to be a uh, very, uh, gotcha. very neutral. Well, I, think, <laughs> I think. I think it's important to remember that although LF pro, LF events are the ones that are most frequently badged, that our badging program is not designed around the LF at all. It's designed for the general purpose of DEI and open source. True, true, but I think there there are also some perceptions from other other communities that I think we need to we need to be careful kind of managing those perceptions. But I agree, yeah, we're not a we are not Linux Foundation focused as a, as an organization. I think we're very uh, uh, open to collaboration with a bunch of different communities, and we don't we don't do anything that's directed specifically at the Linux Foundation. Um, yeah. But I think there are perceptions that we need to overcome uh, if we're going to these other conferences and, and presenting uh, uh, about event badging, for example. I, these are good. These are good suggestions. Okay. Um, uh, thank you. And I just, I was looking kind of at the agenda here and I saw that John has to swim in the ocean today. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not doing like long ocean swims, but I have gone swimming in the ocean every day in July so far. And I'm planning to keep the streak alive until at that's least a, one day. That's a pretty sweet streak. Yeah. What, what ocean are you swimming in? Uh, in the Atlantic, like in New York. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if a thought on getting the word out to other organizations. I don't know in a neutral way. I'm not sure if this is possible. But is there ever an announcement section on GitLab or GitHub or any um, of the platforms where a lot of the projects have their repos? Like, could an announcement be made that, hey, if you're doing a event, think about a diversity, equity, and inclusion badge for your open source event? That I don't know about. Because if they had some sort of an announcement thing that people could see, that would just be a very neutral, wide reaching way of people semi targeted. Yeah, I think just to speak from the Git lab side, you know, essentially there are multiple ways people can host open source projects on GitLab, but many of like the larger ones that would be at the scale that they would be hosting their own event, as an example, would likely be part of the GitLab for open source program. Um, and so we may be able to like include some kind of mention of this in an email, you know, blast out to that group. Um, but like the notifications through the platform tend to be for things like deprecations, you know, and breaking oh. changes and things like that, and less like um, just kind of like public service announcement type things. 
Yeah, I wasn't thinking like the a banner type of thing, more of a, I didn't know if you had a, a place where people could post blogs or um, like a community outreach page, but yeah, like an open source, if, if there's an open source section for a information like that, that would be a probably a pretty good place. Yeah, we do have a forum, so that could be another place that, that such a like this type of announcement would go. Um, these are all helpful ideas. Thank you for that. Um, to move on, um, Sean, I thought maybe you could give. So, for those of you that that are new to this, and this kind of came up in the community call yesterday, is um, the Chaos Project has partnered with All In to um, start pilot testing uh, project badging. So this kind of stems from event badging. And so event badging is um, it's on, it's a much smaller scale. To your point, John, like not every project has events. So naturally, the number of events is smaller than the number of projects. And we're able to do event badging by actually assigning individual reviewers to an event to take a look at what events claim with respect to family friendliness or demographic information. You know what I mean? We can do a public review and it's all done via an issue. Project badging is quite different that we we really couldn't, if, if we anticipated projects to go through um, an evaluation towards DEI, um, doing a human review would just really be impossible. <laughs> so the number of projects just far outweighs the number of, no, uh, number of events. And so um, as part of the project badging update, we have been um, working with the All In project to propose a DEI.md file. And I can bring up that file really fast here, just a second. Um, I have it linked in the flow too. Yeah, and I'm going to have you talk about that flow too. If you could put that in the chat, do you have it, yeah, Andy, yeah. Sean? Yep. Yeah, I just have. There's two things. Um, one is I have to copy the team invite link because you have to join the team to see it. Somebody's using a narrow board, so here is the join team link. Um, nice. Once, yeah, once you've there. joined the team, then you can click on the board. Oh, wait a minute. Also, I can just give anyone with the link edit ability, which I just did. So I guess you don't have to join the team. Here I'm learning things. So if you don't want to join the team, you can just click on the board. That second link apparently is the new public link. So the I'll get to that uh, the flow here in just a second, Sean. Thank you for yeah. sharing. Um, <clears throat> so what what we're doing with with All In um, is asking projects who are participating in. Um, the project badging program, and again, this is still very, very early, we're still in pilot phase, to include a DEI.md file um, as part of their, as part of their org or repository. And the DEI.md file is a file that asks projects to reflect on four published um, chaos metrics. So, for example, project access is one of the metrics, communication transparency, and so on and so forth. Um, in this, by including this DEI uh, statement, DEI.md file in, uh, in their project, the project is talking about how they address such issues around project access or communication transparency. The file itself can be kind of filled out in any way that the project feels is appropriate for their project, because naturally every project is different from every other project and like the ways that one project may approach project access is naturally different than the, a, a way a different project would approach access. And so as part of part of this program, what we're asking is, is for projects to include this DEI.md file 
um, in the repository. And then as part of that, Sean, I'm now going to pull up your, should I just pull up that? Yeah. Mural yeah. Just pull it up. Okay. So we asked for applicants to, to apply for project badging. So I think as part of that application, we would ask, you know, are you a maintainer for your particular project? Um, where is your DEI.md file located? You know, just a kind of a variety of things. And we're working with designers from the Chaos Africa chapter <clears throat> to kind of build that, that application page. Um, and then Sean, do you want to maybe start kind of walking through some of the parts here, like apply yeah. for badging and then yeah. scan the MD file? The so there's DF. some, yeah, there's some really nice uh, front end mockups that the Chaos Africa team has put together and they're busy wiring it into a fully functional site right now. If you want to know more about the badging project, I've put some links to Google Docs in here. Um, I don't know if Matt, with Matt sharing, basically if you click on project badging information, you get a Google Doc link that kind of gives you the high level overview that we developed last fall when we were first uh, working on this idea. And then apply for the project badge. Basically, you go to the project badging website. Um, a maintainer will of a project is able to sign up and request for a DEI badge for that project. We decided that a person needs to be a maintainer because we don't want anyone weaponizing our DEI.MD badges and like getting other projects, reports and things. We want the person applying for the badge to be a, you know, a maintainer, someone who can verify has some rights to actually do this for the project. And so we check that here. And then there's a bot that scans the DEI.MD file next. And there's a link uh, to a doc that sort of explains a little bit more about how that works. And that involves the website and interactions with GitHub where it'll actually scan the DEI.md file and then send the maintainer an update indicating whether or not they have a well formatted DEI.md file. I, I think it's important to note that we aren't doing any kind of fancy chat GPT or other language processing to interpret or assess what the words are. We're, we're just looking for the headings to be formatted as we prescribed so if and to have some text underneath it. So if somebody wants to game the system and put a bunch of ipso lorem stuff under our headings, we're not going to catch that right away with our bot, but we will catch it eventually and they'll be in trouble. Um, and then um, the, at the same time as the badging update is sent, we also um, the bot submits a re of the repository that has been badged uh, to the Augur API, where we do some analysis of how the project's performing in the context of the items related to the badge level that they're applying for. So we're still talking through, right now we're just piling the bronze badge, and if we've got a well-formatted DEI.md file, we know we'll give out the bronze badge. And then that report you know, will be generated uh, as quickly as possible. The working time frame is like a day or two. Um, and so the website will check for the report over here. And then once it's completed, uh, it's sent to the maintainer. Um, garage level bronze is complete. The main, so the website maintains a list of all the badged projects and the levels they're at. It publishes new badged projects on the website and it then emails the DEI.MD status in the Augur report and a little markdown snippet for showing the badge on their readme file in the repo. And then TBD is the silver badge level, gold and platinum. <clears throat> That's kind of it. I'm curious if people have, have questions on this. I think the- Yeah, the it's pretty abstract right here. Yeah, the couple of things to point out is we have, there's two parts that are going on here. So one is is asking projects to include the DEI.md file, which is scanned for the presence of, and just making sure it's well formatted. We can't, we can't really guarantee the text that's in the DEI.md file. We're asking the community members to kind of reflect on the text that's in there. And if a DEI.md file is not representing the project, um, that is handled by the project and not by us. The report that Sean is talking about is, is complementary to the DEI.MD file. And it's a report that's run against a repository. 
to check for things like, are you checking for like inclusive language, Sean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's and so it, just doing kind of a, a language check against a particular repository, that report along with a badge is sent to the applicant by saying, hey, you know, we did a check for inclusive language on these particular repositories. Um, here are some things, here are some data that we see. We're not judging on the on the report. Um, and here are things that you may want to think about when when just trying to improve inclusivity within your project. Um, so uh, an applicant really gets two things. They get the bronze badge simply by having the DEI.MD file present in their repository. Yep. And then they get a report um, that's really complementary to that bronze badge. So I, we're moving forward, we're in pilot phase. So we do have a project that has um, kind of agreed to participate to go through this workflow because <laughs> we anticipate that it's not gonna be perfect by any means. Um, nope. And, and this is just for our GitLab friends here, this is not intended to be a GitHub exclusive kind of thing. This is about improving yeah. DEI within projects. This is just where we happen to be at the moment. And um, and we've been working with uh, you know Sarah and Demetrius at GitLab or GitHub um, in the All In project throughout all of this. So this has kind of been a, a long time coming. And if if you all have interest in ever kind of learning more about this, we'd love to talk to you. It's not necessarily just for like I think what you had talked about earlier, just like the GitLab community. It's across all of the projects that would be supported on the. GitLab platform that want to actually receive. So, oh, and, and it's our intention to eventually, or to build the GitHub, ver the GitLab, excuse me, version of this. We just scoped it to GitHub for the pilot so that we would keep the technical scanning part simpler. But um, our, our intention is to employ this on GitLab as well. And we would love to work with GitLab to make that happen. You don't have to answer now. And I and I should say it's always been our intention to make this <laughs> like it's not because you're here. It's actually something that we've talked about from the it's beginning. Been on, definitely, yeah. definitely on the roadmap. Yeah, it's it's like not like we're talking about it not because you're here, but because it's always been on the roadmap, and this is just a moment of opportunity. Yeah. We should know more. We should like I think the pilot, Sean. Do you have kind of a thought like maybe two three weeks? when yeah. we would go through the pilot. Right now, I think yeah. we're at the stage where we're asking the project to kind of construct their own DEI.MD file. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And just yeah. kind of build that out and let us know if they have questions. And then if they don't, then they would essentially post that file. And then Sean, you could begin your scanning work. Yeah, I um, I just had a meeting with Chaos Africa right before this. And my, my sense is they're pretty close to being able to deploy the site. Like if if we said deploy the site next week, I think that would be no problem. So okay. I, I think we're really what they're doing right now is trying to make some of the content that's extensive um, more easily digestible. Okay. So they're just doing some, I would say, readability, findability, and beautification work okay. um, places where the content got bulky. Okay. Okay. That's cool. So it sounds like that's moving forward. Yeah, I think I think it's in good shape. And I think if we pressed a button that could be put live. Okay. I mean, then I think, you know, one of the things that we should probably start thinking about just in this working group is right now the bronze level DEI.MD file contains these four metrics. So project access, transparency, newcomer experiences, and inclusive leadership. The silver level is going to ask applicants to include attention to two additional chaos metrics, and then subsequently, you know, as they move forward, they have to attend to an additional set of chaos metrics. Might be worth, you know, starting to think about of the metrics that we currently have developed. Um, these are the event ones on top, but of the metrics that we have kind of currently developed or in process of being developed, what we would want to include, you know, in that silver level, in that gold level, and potentially in that platinum level. Um, I know that we had had things like attention to project burnout was a candidate. 
for projects to reflect on, like how they're attending to burnout within their projects. That was originally part of bronze. And I think we're, that was suggested to, to move back. So for example, that could be one. Okay. Okay, Daniel, you're gonna be in charge of explaining. <laughs> I got to drop, but Daniel, you're in good hands with Daniel. Good seeing everyone and thanks for the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See you. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. Bye. Um, so could you just, folks, Kevin, I know you have thought about this quite a bit as well. You know, things that we could think about kind of on those, those future levels. Okay. I have one question for you, Matt. Um, yeah. How so the, the actual status report checks? Is that something that Chaos is doing, and and how what's the frequency of doing that sort of check for report step? That's just on the application of the badge timeframe. Okay, and is there like a follow up of of a check status, like down like a a year from then or anything, or is it just once it's the application's through, it's just kind of a one off um, review? Yeah, it's a one-off review. And uh, so when a project applies for the next badging level, we'll do a comparison of the metrics from the first badging level and the metrics from the second badging level, looking for growth in the areas that are prescribed by the metrics that are there. So we do do inclusive language scanning, of course, but we'll also provide general advice. And what we don't do is give the projects a score. It's, it's just a sort of a scan and some recommendations. And for the bronze level badges, like we've had um, interested projects for the pilots that have perhaps like two or three individuals who are contributing to the project. And in those cases, really all we can look at is the DEI.MD file and uh, the size of the project being quite small and recommend uh, ways that they can encourage the development of a community around their project because that would be that would be an important objective if they were shooting to climb you know to um, get the higher level badges which which is a point an item that needs to be discussed but I have a perspective that at some point the inclusive part of diversity equity and inclusion means you have to include more people so at some badging level there has to be some demonstration that indeed you've got a community forming around it that it's not the same three people who were there when they applied for bronze um, but we haven't decided how to make that determination or apply that logic or not. So that's kind of an open question for the project badging. Gotcha. Thank, thanks, Sean. No problem. Yeah, and also kind of raised something in my, my head. The, at the project, so at the event, when we do event badging, those are one off for the one time event. And if the event occurs next year, they apply for a badge again. We are gonna have an expiration date on project badges. So we're gonna be keeping a tally of the projects that have received the badge, but they will expire after, uh, I don't, have we decided, Sean, when yeah. badges would expire? We've talked about two years, but we haven't implemented any, any policy or governance around it yet. We're, I think that's something that has to be determined okay. um, before we go live sometime during the pilot. We have to make that assessment. OK. <clears throat> a second scan could occur if a badge expired and a project mm -hmm. wanted to go through wanted to go through the process again, or as to Sean's mm -hmm. point out, as they try to move up badge levels, a second scan would occur. Right. Okay. But I mean, yeah, I, th I think, you know, following, you know, some of the guidelines Nutty Eggball and others have laid out, you know, there are projects that will simply be public and open source, but not have communities around them. And, you know, I think it's, I think a bronze DEI.MD badge is pretty excellent. And, you know, if, if your intention as a maintainer isn't to grow a community, then there's probably a limit to how much inclusivity you can bring to the open source world, right? Because there's a commitment of mentoring involved in you know, actually living the inclusivity. So that's just my opinion. Right on. Um, all right, cool. Thank you. Not that, this. Um, so Daniel, do you want to talk a little bit about the link that we do that I just brought up here? Uh, yeah, thanks, Matt. Yeah, you um, bet. And so 
basically um, GitLab's in the process of trying to revamp our contributor programs. And that's the programs for open source contributions back to GitLab itself, the product. And one of the things that I'm pushing for was to get the organization's diversity, inclusion, belonging value to kind of fold into the open source community. And, uh, and you can see this issue put together by Nick, um, who is the director of the contributor success team. And one of the ideas that Nick kind of was pitching here was doing like grant programs um, to try to increase diversity efforts in the community, um, especially one of the things I went through was the Linux Foundation study um, into open source contributions and um, the kind of the idea of the of time um, was kind of the big one that stood out of, of not being inclusive of everybody not having the same amount of time. And so the idea here of trying to do a grant program to buy time for people to um, people from underrepresented groups to make contributions back to open source. Um, so that was kind of how this first idea happened. And then we got feedback from like the legal compliance team saying that uh, this is sort of complex because how are you identifying people that are from un underrepresented groups or the self even asking people to self identify itself becomes a legal question. Um, and so I haven't wanted it to just sort of die off there. I want to see, well, what what can we do to work on this for GitLab's community? And what are other open source projects doing? Um, which is kind of how we found chaos and, and all in, um, trying to figure out like what what do other projects do to try to increase diversity efforts or to, you know, not only to promote a safer um, space for open source community, but how do you do things like buy time for, for contributors that might not have it? How do you incentivize people to contribute, recognize contributors from underrepresented groups um, you know, and so we weren't sure what other other projects are doing and kind of looking for some outside consulting, outside help on this issue. So I don't know if anyone is familiar with um, what other open source projects are doing in the space. I'm wondering if Katie or Anita, you have thoughts on this? I've just been talking a lot, that's all. <laughs> I'm just kind of, um, I'm seeing a different perspective here with how project badging is going with this versus some of the things that I had had experience with setting it up at um, IEEE SA Open. But all of this sounds really good to me. So I'm kind of not having opinions right now. No problem. You know, I think, you know, a couple of things that we, let me ask you a few questions here, Daniel. So I, oh, go ahead, Sean. I, I, my first, my first like thought after brief consideration is that I think this is a positive version of the much maligned bug bounty. So the bug bounty is about you know paying people to fix things, which can lead to the firefighter starting the fires and all kinds of other misbehavior. But I don't see a way to game this. Like this actually seems like a like a concrete way to financially support a project by and also encouraging them to be more inclusive. Um, my first impression is it's a good idea. So one of the things that that um, came up in ChaosCon in uh, at OS, NA, no, the one in uh, Vancouver, um, was kind of a, the difference between um, the types of contributions that say a maintainer is looking for um, and a, a newcomer who is interested in getting started in open source. And sometimes those can be kind of different from one another. So there can be people who want to participate in open source because it provides an opportunity to get involved in technology. It provides a great opportunity to, to learn. Um, but the ability to say contribute to, in this case, uh, you know, um, what you're asking for contributions, those, those that might be kind of a wide gap between what a newcomer who is not experienced with open source. So in, in your case, are you looking to identify people who have strong technical skills? You know what I mean? I saw some documentation in there, but it might help to try to understand the different skills of different people and how you would welcome those different types of skills because you know like what sean might ask for a contributor to augur might be a little bit different than 
um, what we might do when we're just kind of working on, say, documentation. Yeah. Like chaos project. Sure. Might, might be, yeah. and Anita, I see your hand up, but I'll, I'll ask Daniel to just kind of respond to that first, if that's okay, Anita. Um, sure. Um, thanks, Matt. But they, basically, we have done a lot to, and especially me particularly as a newcomer, um, to try to focus on inclusive inclusivity for people who are new to contributing to a GitLab or be open source in general. So we do, we're trying to recognize more with any kind of contribution, contributing to a discussion and an issue, contributing to events, um, to this community chat, not just code contributions, not just people who are heavily technical. Um, and a lot of increase in uh, focus on our documentation to make things easier for first time contributors. Uh, that's kind of been my focus. What we haven't really done yet is looking at the inclus inclusivity of people from underrepresented groups. And so that's kind of the next step, I think, for this program. And, and that's kind of where the block hit of from legal of well, how, how can you ask people to self-identify and then, and then take it from there. And also, what do we actually do? Is, is buying time with a grant program a good idea or not? Is giving more incentive and recognition to those contributors a good idea? Um, that's kind of the area that we haven't addressed yet. Gotcha, thank you. Uh, Anita? Um, all right, so um, first I think it's actually a good idea to consider you know, um, appreciating people's efforts with incentives. And um, I think it's what is something worth looking into and going for. But I think my question is, are these recognitions or this incentive is going to be given to, you know, um, anyone who contributes? Let's say I just joined Open Source today and I heard that they pay people for contributing or they give people incentives for their efforts. And so I'll devote that entire one month into contributing, right? And um, assuming I get um, some form of incentive, that would, for most people, that would be the end for them. Whereas people that have been in the community for like a long time and doing all of this, I think it would be good to start from that angle of people that have been in um, devoting more time, appreciating those people before going to like, I don't know, I don't know how to feel it, but yes, I think it's a great idea, but I think it's be good to also start with people that have been doing or devoting a lot of time over the years, appreciating them for that work. Thank, I thanks, Anita. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I, I just wanted to say, I hope that, that makes sense. I don't know how to put it in words. No, that, that's a really great point. And that's kind of one of the uh, fears too, is that if, if people are contributing because of incentives, Will they become a return contributor to the project? Will they stay on the project and grow with the community? Or once once you've met the incentive and you got that, are you gone? Uh, and you know, that, and the part of that is on us as an open source project to make it a good experience um, and that you want to come back. Um, but we don't really, you know, because we do like a lot of hackathon events and giving away swag or gift cards. Um, and sometimes we're not sure if people are just doing it for the for the swag or um, do they want to be a part of the community and be a part of the project. And I think that's always a hard thing to, to figure out. I, I agree <laughs> with that sentiment, you know, um, that retention of, of new people is always a challenge and getting them to stick around. Um, so from a from a diversity perspective, I mean, are you, are you um, like making efforts globally to, to kind of, I think this point came up earlier around event badging, like meeting people where they are, you know, um, or are you hoping to just provide this and then people will come to this? And the reason I ask this is because like in, in some of what we're doing in chaos is we have regional chapters that we have set up. Um, so we have Chaos Africa, we're starting Chaos Latin America, and we're starting Chaos in the Balkans. And we suspect that that the way open source engagement works in different regions of the world, right, not even a suspicion, but the way that open source engagement works in different regions of the world is different. And we need to understand that um, to really try to improve access, not just to the Chaos project itself, but really our incentive here is to improve access to open source 
at large, you know, like a, the rising tide lifts all boats kind of thing, that if we can have more people participating in open source, that helps. That's a healthy thing for everybody. Um, so has GitLab been doing things to, to, to do that, you know, to try to meet people where they are and understand the, the different needs um, and limitations uh, that different regions of the world may have when, when participating? Yeah, that's another great question, Matt. Um, so in a couple areas, you know, as we're a global company, so we are, and originally from, from Europe, so we are trying to maintain the global um, aspect for the community. Um, and even little things like rotating times for events or um, office hours and things like that. Um, we have a really good all over the world kind of base for our contributors of where everyone's coming from. Um, there are some restrictions though that come up like legally with like even like giving out the swag there are certain countries we can't actually send things to um, we found and then with this uh idea for the diversity grant programs it was kind of brought up that you know there's certain countries we can't ask that question to um and that if we were going to try to get this started it might have to start with just the united states as like a first part of the program and figure out if that can, if it can work and then um, and just kind of what legally we're allowed to do. Um, and I, someone who doesn't understand it, I'm not a lawyer, I don't understand any of that kind of compliance side. So my kind of idea was like, well, there has to be someone else out there that's doing something like this, you know, uh, hopefully in the open source world. And um, is there is there a model for this that exists already that we could try to try to use to maybe start it small and then expand it? Um, have you seen, you mentioned you had seen All In, had you seen the All In for Students part of the All In project? So uh, no, I, I only learned about All In from Anita, actually, I believe, on the Sustain Forum. Um, oh, okay. Mentioned. And so that's how I found that. And um, I was going to check that out next. So that's, there's that's great. Two, so there's kind of two paths here. So one is All In for Maintainers. And that's kind of where the project badging fits. You know what I mean? It's like to help maintainers of projects best centered DEI within their own within their own projects. But then there's also a program called All In for Students. Um, and that had run here, I think, Anita, you can, if you're from more familiar with it maybe than I am, but it has run once here in the United States um, mm -hmm. in partnership with, I think, mostly HBCUs. Yeah, I was entirely focused on HBCUs. Okay. Yep. Yeah. To, 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 one, I think, it was to, to introduce people mm -hmm. to open source, but also to partner them with, organ partner students who are participating in the program with companies to do internships, am I? You're nodding, Sean. Yes, it's it's about get, providing access and experience that previously was not available to the very underfunded CS classes and programs in the HBCU world. And so I know that there were, gosh, I I think there were a number of U.S. Um, based program or U.S. Yeah. based that participated in. Yeah. Program, I that might be something that GitLab has an interest in as well. Were you going to make a comment, Sean? No, it's, always, it's a, just a very successful program. All the students who wanted to get placed in internships did. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a pretty good story. And Anita, this is, isn't All In for Students going to be running in Africa as well? Oh yeah, it is. So that's um, the next all in that um, we're working on right now to bring it to like universities in Africa so that they also get a chance to experience this, um, not only contributing to open source, but also um, getting some form of incentives while doing that and also like internship opportunities as well. So this may be a program, Daniel, that you might want to learn more about. I mean, we can, we're just running out of time here, but it yeah. might be GitLab would want to, <laughs> to investigate yeah. a little bit more that could help here as well. Yeah, that that's awesome. So that's all in for students um, program partner with HBCUs. I mm -hmm. definitely look into that. We like we have a partnership with Google Summer of Code to get interns. Um, like I'm working with an intern from Google Summer of Code right now. Um, and that actually brought up good questions about inclusivity because 
the technical setup to contribute to GitLab is quite large, like as far as the you know CPU um, and such. And so we're kind of wondering, well, how can we procure? I have no idea what that's like. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> Yeah, and if it's you know, if you have if you're asking to be inclusive to contributors, every the idea is everyone can contribute. Um, what if you don't have the technical um, setup to do so? And so, how can we procure um, the right equipment or come up with other ways to to be inclusive? So that was kind of another area that too. So, um, Daniel, are you on the chaos slide? Because we can continue this conversation like async. I can. Like make if you want to follow through on the all in all in for students, whether it's here in the U.S. or also all in uh, in Africa as well as a way to one thing to connect. I have some other ideas as well, but if you're on Chaos Slack, we can continue this kind of async as well. Async is great. I'm not on Chaos Slack. Is there a uh, do you have a link for that one? Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> Uh, it's, I mean, I had it, I saw it in the meeting invite earlier, if I still have that up somewhere, here it is. I hate so, to put you on one more Slack channel. Yeah, we all need more Slack channels. It's our, it's the source of joy in our lives. <laughs> if there was no Slack, what would I do? How would I Slack without Slack? Well, there you go. And, um, I'm thinking from Slack perspective, we do have a, um, one of the working groups, one of the channels is um, WG dash diversity inclusion. And that could just be the channel that we continue this conversation on. That's perfect. Th thank you so much. I really appreciate all the time and all the perspectives from everyone here. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, no, that'd be great. I'd love to continue this on. All right. We are at the end of our time. All right. Um, See you all next week. Enjoy the remainder of your it's remains only, of the day, yeah. as it were. I was gonna say enjoy the enjoy the remainder of your week, but there's still like half left. Yeah, so. well, I think I'll see you in like 10 minutes anyway on the next one. All so. right. Bye. <laughs> see you later, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye.